Hello and welcome back to Revender in Sports and another edition of what is in our stand today. If you're new to the channel, what we talk about here is uh, bike repair, pre preventative maintenance, um, new components, new arrivals of products, uh, new technology. Uh, I also do product reviews because I spend a lot of time on my bike and so I like to review items before I sell them to my customers. Um, we talk about clothing, bikes, basically anything bicycle associated. So if you'd like to get more of that type of, um, of content, then please subscribe to the channel. Also, if you would, please uh, hit that notification bell so that you can receive notifications when I post another video. Also, please like the video because that helps the Facebook, I'm sorry, <laughs> the YouTube algorithm to decide whether the content is something that they want to rank a little higher on their whatever their secret magic that they do um, behind the scenes. And uh, so what we're going to talk about today is one of my favorite wheel companies. And I just did a video last week on head wheels as well, but do another video today because this is a different scenario. It's also a different type of wheel, whereas this one is a disc brake wheel and the other one was a rim brake aero um, 40 ish millimeter deep section wheel. So um, a different application altogether, but still the same solid wheel company that I, I really um, I really think builds very high quality wheels and they used to be a lot more expensive and they over the years last two to three years they've come down in price which makes them a lot more affordable and um, makes it a lot easier for me to position them to a customer when in the past I was not able to because they were they were just too expensive so I'm not really sure why the prices have come down over the years maybe economies of scale or something but the good news is they have come down and they are more affordable to more riders so um, what we have here is we have a, a specialized disc brake bike and the customer came to me wanted a tune-up wanted a few other things any in the tune-up I include the wheel truing but the wheels have or had present tense and past tense as far as what we're doing here they had many nipples that were compromised they were cracked there was um, it, it was going to be impossible to true the wheel so then we would have to rebuild the wheel and the, the wheels a stock wheel set and to be honest I I didn't think it was worth it to go through all that effort but um, so I positioned the head wheels and I said, listen, instead of doing all this to this wheel set, uh, let's look at a better wheel set. We'll start off with a new warranty as well. And I think you'll be happier. Now, of course, the challenge then was that because we are in a global pandemic, we, we have waited months for this wheel set. In fact, we placed the order back in January and today is March 15th. So it, I think a full two months, I think it was right around the end of January, like January the 20th, 21st, and today is March 15th. So almost exactly two months. Now, normally when I would call head pre-pandemic, it'd be seven to 10 business days before we would get a set of wheels. They typically will build them to order and they'll have the parts on hand and they just need to build the wheels. In this case, they didn't have the hubs and uh, they had to wait for them. And just like every other manufacturer of wheels, power meters, bikes, components, the increase in demand, they have just not been able to keep up with that increase in demand. So we are going now to move over to the workbench and please um, 
please allow for the very rough transition because I'm going to get up and pick up the camera and walk over uh, myself so I don't have an assistant and um, so just be aware of that okay here we go so this is a very unceremonious unboxing of these head wheels and they will come with some rim tape and an owner's manual but that's it now they were packaged with the little wheel pucks but i took them off just so that we could get through this a little bit quicker and so here's the both both wheels and what we'll do is we'll take a look at these wheels. We'll look at the build quality. We'll look at the weight of them. And then we'll also look at the wheels that are coming off of our customer's bike. So let's basically start with that. And what I meant by the nipples on, their, on the customer's wheel being compromised is... Now I've just set a couple of these little pieces of black electrical tape just to show you a couple of them but there are many that are compromised and they're cracked um, and one of the issues that we have here is that one of the most common areas to ride because I am my shop is located about six miles from the Pacific Ocean is to ride Pacific Coast High Rate short the um, PCH is what most people will call it so that was the front wheel this is the rear wheel and we've got the same problem just tons of of broken spokes I'm sorry broken nipples they're just cracked and this is a DT Swiss rim but the hub is not DT Swiss. So this is a, an OE wheel set, original equipment wheel set. And it's, um, I think it's a good time to go ahead and update the customer. Now, what, we're, what I've got laid out here is the rotors, which are 160 front and 140 rear. And believe it or not, even rotors are out of stock right now from Shimano. Many months of lead time to get those. Um, here's the cassette. And then what I wanted to show you is the brake pads that we took off of this bike. Now, some people wonder, well, how do you know when the brake pads are too worn? Well, one simple way is you just use that retaining clip and the the width of that retaining clip is about one millimeter and so if you're getting about one millimeter of pad behind that clip that retaining clip then it's time to replace them so that's a quick way to look also it's important to pay attention to your rotors because a lot of times you might go with uh, replacing the pads or replacing the uh, or maybe even <laughs> something that's fairly common in my shop is I see see right there it says 1.5 so that's the minimum thickness of these rotors and a lot of times what I get is a customer will come in and says hey I need to have my brakes bled because I've got no power no braking power and here's another one where it says 1.5 minimum thickness. It's a little easier to read there. And in actuality, what he's got is he's either got worn pads, worn rotors, or both. And that's why the pistons are not able to grab with enough force onto the rotor itself. Okay, so... What I wanted to do is just go through some of the tools. So this is the park tool that you'll need if you have a center lock hub so that you can replace the rotors from one wheel set to the other. 
and that's called the FR-85 from Park Tool. You can use anyone else's. I just happen to have Park Tools. You'll need a torque wrench because when you put this cassette and the rotors back onto the wheels, they need to be torqued to 40 Newton meters. And that's easy to remember. But if you don't want to remember it, when I was an aircraft mechanic in the Marine Corps, we were taught not to memorize things because you could forget that there was a change. Maybe there was a, a tech change and no long, and the torque value is no longer 40 in this case, right? So we were taught to always look up the, the torque value in the latest tech publications. All right, so 40 Newton meters, that'll torque both your cassette and your rotors. This is a chain whip that we need to remove the cassette and typically just a crescent wrench so you can use your removal tool. This is a good tool for every home mechanic to have. Minimum thickness and other things might need to be measured. So it's good to have the digital caliper to get an exact measurement. Things like measuring your bottom bracket, the outer or inner shell of the bottom bracket area so that you order the correct bottom bracket. This wheel set will come with tubeless rim tape, but it does not come with valves. So you'll have to get tubeless valves. This is a tool to remove the, the valve core off the tubeless valve. Of course, we have some sealant. And then we're going to put on my favorite tires of the moment. And these are the Continental Tubeless 5000. Now, interesting story about this and why we're putting these tires on is when the customer brought his bike to me and he said, hey, this is what I got going on. He borrowed a friend's bike that I had just done a tune-up on and it had these 5,000 tires on it. And he says, oh my God, why is his bike so much faster than mine? Why does it feel so much faster? And I said, well, because you're riding gator skin tires. And because you're riding the gator skin tires, they they have more rolling resistance. They're, they're a much harder tire to get up to speed and keep at speed. And sure, it's got puncture resistance, but if you're really interested in fast and or speed and possibly a better ride quality, then you should be looking at a performance tire as opposed to a puncture puncture proof finger quotes on puncture proof and also uh, durability on this tire. So it depends what your ideal or what your criteria is if you if you value more puncture resistance uh, maybe you commute to work or these kinds of things you can't have a flat possibly the gator skin is a better option if you're a recreational rider or even some type of uh, competitive rider then getting to a performance tire is going to pay off much more dividends in either ride comfort and or speed and grip as well anyway so that's all for today we're going to put this uh back together actually one more thing we were going to talk about the wheel quality so or the build quality so let's take a look at that real quick and we will put this on a truing stand and the thing is that a lot of times when i get wheels direct from the factory i find that they are uh, built in a substandard type of way and so it really irks me because I get the wheel set. I then have to uh, do a little bit of truing myself to get the wheel rideable for the customer. Um, and that's, that's not a good thing. So one of the things I like to do is check out the wheel when it comes in from the factory. And in that respect, that's what we're going to do now.
So, sorry for all the moving around of the camera, but it is what it is. I am by myself and this is the nature of working alone. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll just kind of take the wheel, we'll just kind of spin it around and look at the build quality and you'll see there very, very good. Normally, even at this, it's just, it is in really, really good shape. So that's really good to see. That's the front. I had already checked the rear, so we know that that is also very good. And then lastly, let's take a look at how much they weigh. Our trusty little scale here. We'll turn this on and we will put front wheel on here and the front one's at 716 it looks like and the rear is at 859 so there you go, there's the build quality and the weight, actual weight. Thank you so much for tuning in. The video is a little bit longer, but that's fine. Uh, those that want the information will stick around. Those that don't, um, hopefully I got enough of it on the front end for you. But uh, we're looking forward to getting this customer on the wheel set. And tomorrow here at the shop, I do a a shop ride every Tuesday morning. It's a minimum of 5,000 feet of climbing, um, usually between 40 to 50 miles. Tomorrow uh, should be just about the same. Okay, thank you so much. Please like, subscribe, and share the content, and please hit that notification bell. In the meantime, we will see you on the next one.